Eating small meals throughout the day doesn't help with fat loss, but it can definitely help with bulking. If you're bulking, try eating small meals throughout the day. It's so funny how small meals were sold one way, but in reality, it actually works a lot better the other way. Because yeah. that's where it makes the most sense, right? You're trying to eat, you know, 3,500 calories. That's like, you know, what is that? 1,200 calories a meal or something like that if you eat three meals. Those are huge meals after a while once it, you're really trying to stack it up. Yeah, and you get bloated and you feel, you know, digestive issues or whatever. It makes more sense to turn that into like five smaller meals. For fat loss, it doesn't really, you know, help that much except for maybe somebody's, you know, behaviors benefiting. But that's that's also, you know, yes or no sometimes. But when it comes to bulking, I think small meals is kind of a staple, especially when your calories are real high or trying to eat a really high, you know, protein intake. You know, this was uh – I don't know if you remember when we first started the show, this was my biggest gripe when we would talk about this, right? So obviously you uh, you would lead the show with presenting that, you know, the whole small meals myth uh, has been debunked and there's, you know, the, whether you eat one meal or two meal. And I was right in the thick of, uh, preparing for bodybuilding shows and you're eating like 4,500 calories. Yeah, yeah. And like you're like you're literally poking right at me. I'm eating six meals a day and 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 yeah, you know, so I'm carrying all this Tupperware around and so people are probably going like, you know, what the Sal is saying, this small, small meal thing is ridiculous and yet here's Adam carrying all this around and I remember my argument was, dude, try eating 5,000 calories in two meals, like just and and clean. Like yeah. that's not happening. Just, I don't know anybody that does that. Even some of the, the yeah. biggest bodybuilders that eat tons of food, like they just had to portion it mm -hmm. out uh, in six meals that uh, throughout the day. And even those are decently sized when you're, when you're crushing four or 5,000 calories. So yeah, I have found that um, the only, the value that, I, and I will say the value for someone who's trying to lose weight that I still found in it, even though what the re the research clearly shows that there is no benefit metabolically to breaking it up over six versus one or two meals. But what it what it showed clients was portion control. And that part of the weight loss and meal prepping and and uh Yeah, there could be some behavior and discipline, right? And like yeah. you know, putting it together and preparing yeah. it ahead of time. Yeah. And seeing what, you know, eight grams of protein looks like and yeah. what, you know, 40 grams of carbohydrates yeah. look like and getting a, an understanding of that you know, having that many meals uh, consistently prepared and breaking them up kind of, and then like, you know, you eat that and you're done. You don't just keep eating until you're stuffed. Yeah. Like, I think that that was a good uh, behavioral thing, even for someone who's trying to lose but weight. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you got to admit though, right? For bulking, it's definitely like better. Way oh, more it's far value. superior. Yeah. Way right. more value. I mean, you're trying to eat, you know, if you're a female and you're trying to eat, you know, 140 grams of protein a day or a man, you're trying to eat 200 grams of protein a day. Like that's, that's really hard to do in three meals. It's super satiating to eat a high, like a 50, 60, 70 gram protein or for women, 35 grams of protein in a meal. That's really tough. But if you, if you break it up into smaller meals, now it's more possible. And that, that becomes a challenge, right? And I'm kind of going through that right now. I've been kind of on the slight bulk now for a little while. Gut health is still good. So I'm kind of pushing it and see what can happen. And there's no way that I could bulk with three meals a day. They would be so big and so uncomfortable and I'd feel mm -hmm. so terrible. Yeah. I have to eat five kind of meals a day in order to make this, you know, kind of possible. Well, the original way they were selling it was very misleading. It totally. was it was very much like um, the thermogenic effect of food and like eating these small meals was like stoking the fire and like you would burn, you know, more fat with this type of an approach. And so that's just kind of like the information we got coming up as coaches and and I think that's why initially we were like okay we got we got at least like put you know an opposite position to this yeah and it's funny because <clears throat> the bodybuilding space has contributed a lot to the fitness space uh, because the bodybuilding space was really the first kind of strength space that tried to apply tried to apply science to nutrition and to dieting that kind of stuff and bodybuilders have been eating small meals for a while now um, and so what they did, what the fitness space did is they took what bodybuilders did. And the reason why bodybuilder did, did this was exactly what we're talking about. They were eating 4,000 calories yeah. a day, 3,500 yeah. calories, 5,000 calories. High calorie meals. And you got to eat small meals throughout the day to do that or multiple meals, I should say, you know, more than three meals a day in order to make that happen. So what the fitness space did is they took that. And since the average gym, you know, uh, consumer, <clears throat> the average person who wants to work out, not a bodybuilder, but the average person, they're interested in fat loss. They're not interested in building tons of muscle. They're not interested in being shredded on stage. They want to lose weight. So what they did is they took this thing that bodybuilders did, which was they had to do to eat this many calories and grams of protein, and then they twisted it and made up some stuff 
to sell it to people who want to lose weight yeah. when that's totally false. Um, behaviorally, it may contribute and it depends on the person because I can also, I also know people that small meals hurt them when it came to weight loss because uh, it, it was, it was easier for them to not or to skip meals. But when it comes to bulking, I mean, just pragmatically for a lot of people, it just makes sense. And that's the real application. <coughs> that's where I think it makes the most sense. What's up, everybody? Today's giveaway, MAPS Anabolic, the first MAPS program. Here's how you can win. Leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. Subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. If we like your comment, if we think you're the winner, we'll let you know in the comment section. Also, these are the final hours for our January promotion. These three workout bundles are on sale right now, $300 or more off, up to nine months of planned workouts. All set up, great discounted prices. But again, these are the final hours if you're catching this episode when it drops. So if you're lucky, you got here in time, you want to take advantage, just click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, here comes the show. A little off topic, but I wanted to ask you because you brought it up in our thread and we haven't talked since then. Uh, you found out the UPS guy was a, a, oh, a dude, listener. So cool, how right? That, how did that happen? <laughs> well, no, so I've known him. I know that he's a listener for a while. So, he, you know, he drops off packages. So what kind of packages you yeah, drop Sex off? toys, like fourth yeah. time this week. Sex was box vibrating. Is vibrating. Boy, what is this Again, guy? Again, <laughs> what's going on? <laughs> yeah. Is this for you? Every day. <laughs> no, no, no he, he drops off packages. And and um, and one day he came. He's like, oh, I, I love your show or whatever. And so I was, I was like, cool. And I met him. Well, anyway, every time he comes by, I say hi to him because he delivers packages in the neighborhood. Well, yesterday I'm outside with Aurelius. And we're playing outside and the UPS guy comes and he's delivering something to one of my neighbors. So I'm like, Hey, I'm like, you mind if we look in the back of your truck? Cause my, my son's like super into cars and trucks. And he's like, sure. So we go back there and he opens up the back and everybody's just super pumped and excited. He's checking it out. And anyway, I met this guy, his name is Dustin, super cool guy. And he was talking about how he got the rest of the crew over at U U UPS to listen to the show. So give him nice. a shout out. Super, uh... super nice guy. Does jujitsu and he was asking me. Probably had great calves. Did you tell him about your purple belt? Huh? <laughs> no, it's not even. It's, I, I'm a white belt now, dude. It's been, you know how long it's been. Do you since, lose belt? You can't lose belts, right? That's not my that skill level's gone, dude. I, I know, but you, you, if you were to go back at it, they wouldn't put you back down, right? You automatically get to. Start. I would put myself back down, or I'd be embarrassed. Well, I mean, that's like, I mean, I technically have my pro card, but I would never go get back on a pro stage yeah, like, yeah. right now. That's what like, I mean. Yeah, yeah. So. But I mean, it's been you know how long it's been. I was doing the math the other day. How long it's been since I've trained it's been like 15 years wow a long time wow so yeah no don't, don't. <laughs> i had over. a purple belt <laughs> speaking of aurelius i gotta tell you guys so funny so he went to my parents house the other day loves hanging out with my parents he always has fun when he comes home he's always like you know none of house fun you know aurelius has fun he's so excited anyway i go over there to pick him up and my parents are speaking to each other and to me in sicilian okay which aurelius doesn't understand so they're speaking to me and Aurelius is eating, and then he looks at us and he goes, blah, 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 like, are you speaking, are you trying to speak Sicilian? He's speaking family guy Italian to you. He kept, he did the hand signals and everything like my parents. Oh, bro, we were dying. I'm like, what did Nona say? And he's like, maybe, maybe, So I wonder what, okay, so that's interesting you bring that up because there is, I'll have to ask Katrina which ones they are, but there's two or three cartoons that Max prefers to watch in Spanish. It is the funniest, yeah, it is the funniest thing ever. Like, and if you try and change it, he gets pissed. And so Katrina's like, okay, whatever. If he wants to listen to it in Spanish, we'll let him listen to it in Spanish. So he's, hey, mate, he's and it's only, a, it's only, a, well, that's what we figure. It's like, okay, yeah. well, if he wants to, I'm not going to not let him do that. So of course you can listen to it. But it's only like, there's like two of them, I think. I'll ask her which ones they are. But for some reason. Has he picked up any words or anything? Not that I know oh, yeah. of. Not that I have noticed. I mean, he's still barely getting like, he's like, he's still, I mean, he was behind on his speech. And so he's still, for his age, because uh, I remember my best friend, someone who's at this age, was saying things a lot more clear than he was. He still is not putting like consistently full sentences that all make sense, which is the uh, you know the fun part because like, the stuff doesn't always oh, make it's so fun. Oh, yeah, complete it's sense that you're trying to. Yeah, figure I out. really says something new every day, and I don't even know where he, he hears half the shit. Like he was he was <clears throat> in a blanket the other day, and he's like, "Oh, Baba, it's so cozy." I'm like, "What? Cozy? Like who says cozy in the yeah. house?" <laughs> he says stuff like that all the time. It makes you realize um, that they they hear everything that oh, you say. They pick, oh, they, he said shit. I didn't tell you guys. Oh, he cussed. <laughs> See, Max hasn't cussed yet. Bro, he oh. dropped. Proud, that, I'm, that's like a, I'm proud of us that we. No, no. Been you able know to how he that. did it? He did it the way I do it because I think he can't hear me. So he dropped something and he he's like playing and he whispered. He goes shit. 
And I'm like, <laughs> wait, Jessica, I think you just said shit. <laughs> he hears me say it. You know what I'm going through right now? So the, this phase we're at is really interesting. Um, and I and I, I definitely noticed a, a difference when he uh, gets to go to school and when he doesn't. He is going through a really aggressive physical phase now with me. Like he's always kind of wrestled and we play. Yeah. And a lot of that I feel like was me, you know, ah, you know, kind of mess with him where now and I have to catch myself because I'll come home. I might be doing something still work wise or, or working on something at the house. We've been putting things together at the new place. And so, and he'll just out of nowhere off the couch, <laughs> just like jump yes, on the back dude. of my neck and face rake me and like freaking stick his fingers in my eyeball and in my nose. And like, he just, wow, you teach him all the dirt, bro. Moves. He's nice. like, he's very physical and, and, and aggressive right now that, and he hasn't had that. I told Katrina, I'm like, man, he's, more than usual and what i think i'm actually connecting it to aside from he's kind of probably just going through this phases it is definitely more when he doesn't go to school because we've been in this transition from moving from the other town to this one and so he's been out of school more the last two or three weeks and if i come he's home and, energy out. yeah and he hasn't got that playground energy out oh boy that's the he don't even say hi to me as soon as i walk in the door it's like uh, and he runs over and hits me right in the nuts oh, you know what I'm saying? yeah, yeah. The and then it's like on you know what i'm saying it's like i cannot get i cannot get him to stop He's that's just the worst i made aurelius th was throwing his toy cars and one of them hit me in the nuts and i went oh and i'm it's, you should never yeah because now you got a reaction yes yeah. so now he knows <laughs> that's where i aim yeah, yeah. so Dude. he'll walk up to me while i'm doing something with a toy and if I don't see him, he aims directly for my nuts yeah, every yeah, time. Yeah. And, he, and it's like. I'm so happy for uh, Everett's birthday. I think I told you guys. I don't think I told on the show, but we got him this punching bag of a, uh, one of those guys. It's like oh, yeah. you know a torso and then yeah. just a face. And uh, so I put that downstairs. And this is like working famously because I knew. I'm like, dude, if he's anything like I was where it's like you get frustrated. And he's, he's going through the spell of like he just wants to like just resist and rebel like almost anything that you're going to promote to him you know it's like any kind of schoolwork, any kind of like going to gymnastics or doing anything that like he's not doing right then he's just yeah. like ah! you know i'm like okay go beat up chad he named him already he's he named chad. him chad yeah he named him chad he goes down there and you listen to him like ah! <laughs> ah, 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 ah. He's just like beating the shit out of this thing. I love it because so it's like it, it's so, so works, son, bro. You know, he comes know. up and then he's, he's so just chill, son. and he's like, "Maybe we should get one of those here for Justin." We should. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna get you a Chad, bro. So fucking go bro, talk to Chad for a little bit, Justin. Yeah, I've already buried that uh, that that anger <laughs> yeah, let it a long out, time ago. Dude. Let it let yeah, it out, yeah, everyone. Yeah, we might need out. to get like a really strong one though. I don't know if you guys yeah. want me to surface it. No, 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 no. I'm just. That's why we don't want you to do psychedelics. God knows what's coming out. You hit the wrong. Start choking out a shaman, dude. <laughs> you wanted me to release this. It's yeah. out. Hey, speaking anyway. of psychedelics, where what's the you know you you were pretty good about updating us on a pretty regular basis on the legislation that was going on and like are they making any new moves? Yeah. I mean, you were you were a you know an they, owner of Compass. I know you had their stuff yeah, before. Like, I still have some of their stock. So, um, ketamine therapy is uh, now legal in uh, I know here in California. Wow. So you can actually get. So I've never tried that before, and I've been told to. I have heard. I've never. I mean, I, I haven't either. So I actually talked to a therapist who's an expert. She doesn't do the th ketamine therapy, but she works with it and is familiar with it. And she says that what it does is it allows the brain to rewire thought patterns so that you can overcome these kind of automatic thought loops or reactive so processes. So how does she compare it then to psilocybin? Because I feel like that's what psilocybin does. They like all do that to an extent, but they're all different, right? So yeah, MDMA, psilocybin, both I've experienced. So both I've used like in the relationship therapeutic like way. And they do have a similar yet different feeling. from. Yeah, it's a, that's a really good question, um, Adam, because I'm not quite sure. I know that they work similarly from what they see, but they're obviously different. That's yeah, totally I thought I thought ketamine was kind of, like, I don't know Ketamine's anything, Ketamine's a right? tranquilizer. Oh, yeah, I was going to say, I, th I thought it was more like an opiate is what I was going to say, something that's more sedative. It, I don't know. Because so, so MDMA is obviously not sedative No, so the way she explained it is she's, so, so she has experience with it. She had a severe um, fear of flying. And she said after one session- she can get on a plane now. She couldn't get on a plane, and after a session, she can get on a plane. So the way it was, and there's literally places wow. in San Jose that you can go to. So the way she explained it to me is, you meet with a doctor slash therapist. I think they do a session with you. Then they give you the ketamine to take home, and it's in a 
I think it's called a trouch. A trouch. Trouch. I don't know how to pronounce it. T R O U C H E. So I don't know how to pronounce that. Trouch. Yeah, I don't know. Trouche. <laughs> Trouche. It's a French word. Yeah. It's Trouche. <laughs> but anyway, you um, you, you, toi. you take it home. I think you call them. Then you write in a journal. You put it, you take it, and you make sure you have a sitter. They say you have to have a sitter, so someone kind of is going to get you water and whatever. <laughs> you take it, you lay down, and then once it starts to kick in, you sit up and you write, and you think you have to have an intention. Like, I want to process this. I want to process that. And that's it. So you so, do it at home. The, okay, so if there's places here you in mean, San Francisco. Does that mean it's anything? No, it not, you, you I, go home and you think about. It's not illegal, Sal? No, it's legal. I didn't know that. It's legal for this, for therapy. Well, especially like they they allow you to go home with it. That yeah. sounds crazy, like a, a big step. So, yeah. I mean, legally- There's a could, website. I could find the website. Yeah, fine. I mean, so legally, could we do it and then like do it on a, do I mean, an episode be, or something? Well, or we'd or, have to actually have- No, no, no. You got it, bro. You, a, you can't a, just a go a do psychological it. psychological issue. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, you guys, I'm sure you guys have lots of but psychological. Yeah, I, mean, we can. I know you guys pretty well, so- <laughs> Justin, we I don't want to do that. You qualify for 15 sessions <laughs> according to what you told us. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> I'm just going to be angry. But I'll anyway, that's what's, that's what's happening right now. And I think that's what it, the way it needs to be these things need to be used because you also look at the research and um it can as as effective as it can be for helping people with um certain issues, it can also trigger and send people into terrible Anxiety. Well, and it could also, create PTSD. And it could also be very addictive, as I've M seen misused, in, our, yeah. in our space, the people that. Psychologically addictive. Yeah. I mean, and I mean, I could see how that happens. I mean, uh, I, in the last, what, few years, introduced Katrina to it. And, you know, one of the things that we notice is every time. So in five years, we've probably done it four or five times. So once a year, I'd say we have done like microdosing with psilocybin. And every time we have, we have amazing uh, breakthroughs in the relationship and we feel even, so I could see how people could get addicted to that. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that like, wow, man, every time we do this, sex is amazing. And oh, That's we learn something new. Tool, man. Yeah. And because it's a powerful tool, I could see how you start to play that, you know, justifying well, the way we should it was, do it again this weekend, and we should do it again well, next that's it. weekend. The way that it was explained to me is it's uh, the integration is the work. Right. So you get the feeling, you get the ability to, to, Think about things in a particular way, forgive yourself, whatever, however you want to word it. And then it's the integration of the work afterwards that's important. Falling in love with the feeling that it provides is then that becomes addictive behavior and you yeah. distract yourself. Well, and then I think also the other part isn't just the integration part. Then also, I think the goal would be just like how we talk about like intuitive eating. The goal would be to, to, to figure out what it's helping you break through with and yeah. start to teach yourself how to do that exactly. organically That's or naturally. I yeah. So I, I think, you know, when I talked to like Katrina's mom, who's a, a more on the holistic side of things like that, they don't use anything like that. And she's hardcore into meditation and the, the spiritual stuff. Like I would tell her about my experience with that. And she, she just kind of laughed at me and she goes, Oh honey, she goes, that's the beginner stuff. When you get, when you really learn to do this, you don't need any drugs. You do this naturally. That makes sense. And I don't disagree with her. I'm like, I could see, I could see how people could get addicted to the the drug and the high part of wanting to utilize it. And to me, maybe that's the lazy part is that you just. I could see it being a tool. Like imagine this, imagine mm -hmm. if we had a way where someone could take a pill or something and then be fit and healthy for 24 hours. So it would give them the feeling of, oh, this is what it's like. Right. Oh my God, this is what it feels like to feel good. Right. right. So then that might be the impetus that they need to say, okay, this is what I want to do and take care of myself. But the work is still right. in doing those things. And also the, there is no end goal. We've talked about this a million times. It's the journey process. That's where you learn. So, and someone could get addicted to just taking something to feel exactly. this particular way. Yeah. yeah. I mean, highly likelihood they'd be seeking those pills out like continuously to feel that yeah. feeling. Speaking well, isn't that what we see? I mean, we yes. see that a lot in our space. I feel like uh, the our space tends to, which I'm sure there's somebody who's listening right now who's going to get defensive about this like cause, because you're poking at that. Like Our space does this because, I, I mean, my theory is this, is that the health space is a growth-minded, whether mm -hmm. you want to look better, burn body fat, build muscle or not. You stay in it long enough, it's a it's a pro personal growth journey because that's what it is really. And if you stick to it long enough, eventually you're like, okay, I got this fitness thing down. Wow, I've developed a good relationship with nutrition. Okay, I've got a better relationship with stress and now relationships and eventually you get to spirituality. And that's why you see all these fitness and health people who've been doing this for 10 years. Mm -hmm. Next thing you know, they're you know doing psychedelics, they're doing ayahuasca, they're doing crystals, and they're searching, right? Because you keep going down this path, 
you're eventually going to touch everything, and it's 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 and you it's a and you probably that. are more attracted to that because you come from a the, the science based community, and so you want to reject uh, traditional religion, Correct. and so. You know, for some weird reason, praying to my mother ayahuasca and doing crystal stuff doesn't seem as religious to you. So you go, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I know, I know I'm probably offending people. I just think no, I mean it's just it's, grow. It's I mean, I've ironic. seen. Yeah, it is ironic to me. Somebody who's seen both and been around both. Yeah, a lot, like, I don't so. believe in all that, but you know, yeah. the universe told me. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah it's like what's uh, the difference? Yeah. Yeah. you know what I mean. <laughs> anyway, speaking of pills, I was thinking a lot. So there's this doctor that has now been interviewed a couple times. I don't remember her name. We'll find her. But there's this clip of her talking about how, you know, regardless, of, this like something along the lines of regardless of your lifestyle, how you eat, oh, I saw your activity this. levels, I saw this. you're not going to change how you're, you're obese. It's like it, the, the, your odds of being obese if you have two obese parents. That was a 60 what minute. An that was a message. That was a 60 minutes interview. Yes. That's what that's the, from, from. The odds of you being obese if you have two obese parents is 80%. She's like, so genetics play a huge role, this and that. And it makes me want to rip yeah. my remaining hair out of my head because yeah. the reason why you have an 80% chance of being obese with obese parents is because you live the lifestyle that they live. It's yeah. not. Yeah. Yes. It's not a disease. Stop trying to sell it. So I was thinking a lot about this You're this week. You're not weekend. helpless in that fact. And I'm, you know, I'm going to make a statement that I 100% stand by, which is that the pharmaceutical industry, so big pharma, and the medical industry, um, either knowingly or unknowingly, so consciously or unconsciously, do not like fit and healthy people. In fact, it's they hate for profit. They hate fit and healthy people because fit and healthy people are the worst consumers of their products. If you're fit and healthy, you don't take you take far less medications, or the medications that you do take, if you have to take them, are typically generic and inexpensive. So maybe you're a diabetic because you're born with insulin, or you have to take thyroid. Okay, but you're not taking expensive pharmaceutical drugs that are controlling all these different symptoms. You don't go to the hospital or the doctor very often at all. You are not the consumer they're looking for. You are yeah. not a profitable consumer. I think it's I think mm -hmm. it's less insidious than that. I think it's just more straightforward that it's the the way they make the most money is giving you the pill. The easiest way to convince you you need that is to convince you that it's it is some genetic well, that's, thing. Well, that's what I mean. I know, so, but I mean, I don't I don't think it's like there's this like evil plan like we hate we want everybody. No, it's I like I it's just it's, easy. It's like hey, if we tell people it's not their fault, they're gonna they already don't want to exercise, they already don't want to make those choices. So now we're giving yeah. them the easy out, and then what we're gonna do? And that's what by the way, like if you cannot see the setup that's coming. Oh, come on. You know, it's like, it's so wake obvious. up. They're like pushing this, so hard for yes. these pills. And that's the, the, the follow-up to this is right. all these medications that are going to follow that. And you're going to, now you're going to have all these people that are going to be on you're, these fat I mean, loss. You're going to be able to go to the doctor and by just being overweight, no other symptom, yep. no yep. other conditions, yep. you're going to qualify for obesity drugs. Insurance is going to cover it and they're going to make a killing. And they're going to convince you that there's nothing you can do lifestyle-wise to change this, so try and take our medication. Now, I'm not saying, this is what I mean by unconsciously, like consciously, unconsciously. I don't think they have this big like meeting and they're like, we need to get rid of, like we hate fit and help people. <laughs> what like I mean Dr. is- Dr. Claw there. Just like, <laughs> yeah, no, what I mean is that the system them? itself, the system itself is- <laughs> Inspector Gadget it, is, reference, <laughs> excellent. It's geared Thank and you. designed to uh -uh. treat people who are not fit and healthy. So by design, <clears throat> you are not the consumer. You fit and healthy people, people who exercise regularly, people who eat right, people who take care of themselves are totally not the consumer. They're looking at everybody else. And so if they can get everybody to move from here to here or take people and prevent them from moving in that category of fit and healthy, they've expanded their market. And mm. the largest, most profitable potential market that I can think of is obesity because you don't have to have high blood pressure. You don't have to have diabetes. You don't have to have anything. If they can make obesity a disease, you qualify for- for treatment, insurance companies cover it. Doctors can now treat it, and it you have just opened up a billions and billions of dollar market, and that's no. the whole that's the whole point. Yeah, no, you I know. agree with that. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of money out there to be made, bro. Yeah. Speaking along those lines, let's go. You know, I'm I'm gonna go down a little tangent here. Uh oh. So okay, so I'm not gonna make any statement like opinion. I'm not gonna pass any opinions, but it's really weird. Okay, I've been I wrote them down. I've been seeing articles like I've never seen before. I've been seeing articles that are saying. Mm. Eating too many eggs is causing blood clots. Mm. Climate change is yep. increasing the risk of heart that. attacks, sudden heart attacks. Solar flares. Was Social media. Solar flares too. Gas stoves. Uh, 
sudden adult death syndrome is like this big thing now that people are talking about that I'm seeing articles come out like crazy. How's wow. this thing? Isn't that weird? Yeah. Is well, it just like, I've never heard, I've never seen so many strange articles connecting. I just imagine things. Googling, you know, and you're trying to kind of figure this out. Like why, what you're seeing is, you know, and, and then you're going to stumble upon a, an article that's telling you like, uh, you know, solar flares uh, happen every so often. And then, you know, people uh, get heart conditions as a result. Well, yeah. listen, we need to give we need to give people something to uh, attach themselves to and share to their friends when they're defending their reasons for their five shots that they've taken. Yeah. Now. That's what it and feels that's like. Really, what it smells like to me is just like here you go. Here's some articles it's to help. Very, it's very help deliberate. defend defend yourself on why you're going to go get your next booster and why it's smart for you to keep doing that because this is attached to other things. It it's just to weird to me because I, 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 you know, like, again, I'm not going to make any statements, but when I see the propaganda machine go in full swing and literally I've never in my life seen articles that have said anything like this. Um, it's very weird to me. So it's like, why are they saying all this? Is it because they're preparing people for data that's coming out? That's showing. Of course, well, that's already that strokes, it. blood clots, well, and you, heart attacks. So is this, okay, so explain how the, the process is investigating. Right yes, yeah, I say explain explain the process to me because I'm unfamiliar or with CDC. this. Like CDC launched an investigation, right? Yeah. yeah. So what should we look forward to as far as like how long does that take before we start to hear numbers and feedback? Where is it going to be announced? Is it going to make mainstream media? Has it already been announced? Years. Like, are you? Oh, years. Yeah, it'll take years. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, it'll take it'll take at least a few years um, to to get all that data. And I, you know, I told you guys. And about it, that. between that time, we should be able to get at least four or five more boosters out, is what <laughs> Pfizer is saying, right? Like, oh, we got, we still got four or five uh, more. Boosters and now we, we have to make. we have to change, you know, with with athletes and, and people getting physicals, like uh, to make sure like they account for, uh, you know, any kind of a heart condition. E EKGs. Yeah. So schools. That's protocol now. Yeah, a lot of schools now are are as part of your physical. When you get a physical. I don't know. I've, I've, I've gotten physicals when I was a kid for judo and tournaments and they don't do an EKG on you. But now uh, lots of schools are requiring EKG as part of the physical because of the, they're saying because of the risk of um, sudden, you know, heart failure yeah. just on Let's the court. Just call something else. Or whatever. What was the percentage of it? Because uh, I know the, the people that defend this or try and argue it is that this has been around for decades and we've known about it. And I can't remember what I read, but the percentage of athletes on average that have gone down for the sudden death, right? Yeah. Uh, I forgot what the number was for the last, say, decade we've been tracking. And there, then in the last year or two. There was like more than the, in the last year than there were yeah. in the previous year. Right, right. That's what I, think, I think that's what I read, right? Yeah, so I in the FIFA last year, to... all of a sudden, we have, we've accumulated more in one year's time than we did the previous 10 combined. Yeah. And to me, that's... Well, and it's hard too because you'll get like countering articles and and all this other information trying to, to dismiss a lot of the numbers and kind of shuffle the numbers around. And so it's like, what are the actual numbers? It's really hard to get. But you know, just from examples that you can Google of like all around the world of people where this has happened to, and especially in the athletic community where it happens very infrequently, it's very substantially higher. So here's here's and this is gonna oh for sure we're gonna piss somebody off here. I was talking to my cousin. Uh, day before yesterday and they just had a, uh, a, a family friend that was hospitalized with the, with the clot a week later after the vaccine or the booster or whatever. And one of the things that her and I were talking about, was like, you know, what's really crazy. She, and she was like, I know nobody that died from COVID or, or had anything. Everyone got, I know a lot of people that got sick and felt like a bad flu, mm -hmm. but she goes, I have nobody connected to me personally that died of COVID. And I said, well, I have, I know one person who, who was connected to me. She goes, but I got at least five people I know that had some severe adverse effects after they got at the vaccine. And I, I said, I can't deny that either. I said, I actually, I have way more people I know mm -hmm. that I've heard issues of the side effects from taking it than I knew that actually, I have, and I know somebody who died from COVID. Look, this is anecdote, okay? So not evidence, we're not doctors, but I have a cousin, 14 years old, who he lived in Italy and they really pushed hard over there. Like you yeah. got a, you got a oh, digital yeah. passport, you couldn't work, you couldn't go grocery shopping. And um, he had to be hospitalized and he's still getting treated. They can't figure out what's wrong. That was after he got his uh, vaccine. I have another cousin who was breastfeeding. And by the way, you could look this up. This sounds crazy, but you can look it up. And in forums, you'll see women talk about this, that their breast milk changed and turned a blue tinge. 
Wow. Her breast milk changed, started turning a blue tinge. She stopped breastfeeding her baby. Couldn't figure it out. Uh, by, by the way, I do want to say this. Again, uh, you know, this, this, that's all anecdote, but the, the industry itself is to blame for all of these, for all the people who are like not trusting them because of the way they pushed it, because of the way that they gaslighted people. There were women who were like, this is messing with my period, and they got canceled off social media. Then mm -hmm. later on, they're like, oh, yeah, it does affect your period. There were people that canceled for certain things. Oh, yeah, it does do that. We got that Rasmussen poll that came out, a poll that came out. 7% of people in the poll said that they got side effects that were severe enough for them to go back to the doctor or take work off. Well, mm -hmm. the, the biggest thing, that's so, the, the most bullshit about all of this, to me, in my opinion, is that, and we will get this from this conversation, is that, oh, the, I don't want to hear political talk. on the, like There's... For, we've attached it. We've attached uh, yeah. medicine and medical and, procedure and, to politics and and and, yeah, it, and, the, and that we can't have an open discussion about our thoughts around it without us supposedly staking a a claim for a political side. Yeah. That's ridiculous to me. We're in the science business. That's what we've been doing. That's part of our field. You wouldn't and to not, it if it was super To not be able to communicate that openly with other intelligent friends that I have in the space without it turning into, oh, you're making a political stance. It's fucking crazy to me. No. Why can I not? I don't, I have, this has nothing to do with how people Look, vote. I'm just, I'm so yeah. curious about what, what's We're going on. concerned with people's health and so on. And to me, it, it, it's in that sphere of uh, what we talk about, what we're concerned about, it's always like a consideration is like how we can advocate for ourselves. That's just the natural thing look, to talk look, about. Look, you though. can go back. We we, had, we recorded podcasts when this is all going down. And I kept saying, we got to look at the data. I want to look at this. I, I'm, I'm healthy, so I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait a little bit. I was never anti, never pro. I was very much like, let's look and let's see what's going on. Well, with the current accepted data, the current accepted data, these are at the very least, nobody can argue this, ineffective. They're terribly ineffective. They're, they don't prevent transmission. They last like three months, the, the preventative, whatever. The side effects are nasty. People feel like shit the day after. And then other people, there's other reports of other stuff. But the accepted data shows that these are ineffective, ri like very risky in terms of side effects, and the most profitable. That's a terrible combination. Yeah. yeah. Especially and when without you have, scrutiny. Especially when you have a, a, a pharmaceutical company or a company in general, a corporation that got a deal with the US government guaranteed taxpayer dollars in, in the tune to the tune of billions of dollars. So th that's where I'm like, eh, let me just wait and see what's going on. Let me continue looking at the data. And oh, by the way, you tell me almost anything and I'm going to question it because your incentives are to lie to me. Exactly. There's no incentives for you to tell me the truth unless the truth is in your favor. If the truth isn't in your favor, your incentives are to lie. And do you have a history of lying? Well, the great, the, the largest lawsuit ever for, for, for fraud was towards a pharmaceutical company. Largest ever paid out was that they lied and that they got to pay out. I think what drug was it? I don't remember what the drug it was. Well, but that's what's crazy. Matter. There's so many examples. Yeah. yeah. And then the you and then you know the government. Do they lie to you? Oh, yeah, they lie to you all the time. I mean, that's they, admit, yeah. they lie to you all the time. There's so. so many examples of these pharmaceutical companies getting sued like crazy for adverse effects that they were withholding from public knowledge. That's I'm what, just, that was I'm the just over one the gaslighting about having a conversation around. I think that's ridiculous. Which, by the way, too, uh, Trump was a huge pusher of this thing from the yes, dude. So dude. It's not a left or right thing. No, it's he a, still this is. This is not All a left or right thing. It's a it's a government and fucking pharma yes. thing. Yeah. And the fact that you you can't openly communicate it without being canceled or people fucking getting all defensive like you're trying to make a political sense. Like, this ain't political. So fucking wake up. Open your eyes, dude. Pay attention to the signs. Yeah. And, and guess what? We said it here and we've been saying it. Here, watch what's about to happen to y'all with the obesity thing. That's coming next. Yeah. Yep. That is 100% coming next. They're setting, the t they're setting the they're setting the table right now with the bullshit gaslighting around it being a, a genetics thing and then the next thing is going to be they're going to solve your problem. Yep, yep, yep. Fuck, All man. All right. So you mentioned athletes, Justin. You reminded me of something interesting that I just I read about one of the most undervalued performance enhancing substances uh that you can that you can find. It's one of the least expensive most effective performance enhancing substances. It's sodium. I just, so check this out. So, so you can lose about half a liter to four liters of sweat per hour during a workout. Okay. So that's on average, half a liter to four liters of sweat. Each liter has roughly 900 milligrams of sodium. Okay. So if you sweat a lot in one workout, you might need up to two to three grams 2,000 to 3,000 milligrams of sodium to replace what you lost. Wow. So what does that mean? 
when you don't have enough sodium in your body, your muscles can't contract effectively. Mm -hmm. You can't, you lose stamina, you lose strength, you lose the ability to, to, to hold on to fluid. For bodybuilders, you don't get a good pump. Your protein synthesis can drop as a result. Yeah. Um, and in extreme cases, you become faint, dizzy, and all that stuff. You feel like garbage. Headaches. Yeah. I get headaches. Yeah. So uh, do you Joints have any idea, any mm -hmm. idea um, on how much you lose from the the sauna and, and jacuzzi? Oh, probably more because you, you sweat if I, more. Yeah. If I sit in there, one, if I don't stay hydrated or take my LMNT before I go in, yep. and I sit in there longer than 20 minutes in either the sauna or my jacuzzi, I get a massive headache mm -hmm. and I'm always reminded, like, God damn it. I know better. Like, so I've identified for myself, it, uh, I'll drink one element tea during my workout. So that's a thousand milligrams. And I'll drink another one when I go in the steam room, which is another thousand. If I do that, I feel good. I wonder how much you lose. Can you look it up, Doug? Can you tell me what, like how much like, sodium? Like what, what, like what 30 like, minutes or yeah, something? 30 minutes of a sauna or 30 minutes in the jacuzzi. How much salt? This just happened to me the other night. Like Katrina and I, we, we were out in the, our jacuzzi. Maybe how much sweat you lose, Doug? Cause then we know it's 900 milligrams per liter. See what that looks like. But it's got to be more. Yeah, a pint of sweat during a short stint. So it doesn't give you an exact time. How many liters is a pint? Uh, it's less than a liter for sure. It is? Uh, well, two pints in a quart. Uh, well, we four Google quarts too. in a gallon. So, I mean, Chat I think GBT. a liter. Yeah, let's use ChatGPT. <laughs> yeah, we could probably find it through there. Uh, <laughs> uh, let me see here. No, I'm just curious because this has happened to me multiple times. And every time I, I that I don't remember to do that, it, it happens. And I'm like, gosh, dang it. You think I'd learn, and maybe if I had the number, it would really motivate me. <laughs> like, hey, you know, you're losing this much when you do one that. liter is two pints. So you're, I mean, you're probably losing. I would, I would say you're probably losing a liter to two liters, depending on how much you sweat. And you know, the more you sweat, the more you do it, the more, the more easily you sweat. I don't know about you guys, but yeah. if I sauna regularly, I'll break a sweat real fast and sweat real nice oh, when I'm, I'm in there. there. I haven't even noticed that. Yeah. I don't know if I've. Ever well, this, all, this always reminds me, though. I mean, when I was. I was playing and um, it was like humidity level was really high. We were just like sweating, just getting to practice. But the protocol was like, drink a lot of water, make sure you're properly hydrated. The, there wasn't enough talk about sodium intake. Mm -hmm. And there was still that like dehydration effect that you would feel, you know, even after uh, you're done with practice. And like, it just didn't, we didn't have that right balance. That's because we grew up in the era of, of salt being demonized. Yes. Yes. Salt and fat was a big, yeah. during, I think that still playing, persists though. You know, in, it in does. Athletics. No, 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 you're right. It's, it does, but it was, it was real high. At least like the, the information, I mean, there's brands like Element and Dude, stuff like that that if are your now sodium's up. low, your cravings are off. Your 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 mood is off. You're not going to have good performance. You're you're not going to sleep well. It could throw off your hormones. Sodium will affect things like your thyroid. So you need to have um, adequate sodium. It's the most underutilized, undervalued, and yet most effective when needed. You know, compound you can think of is salt. Shit, wars were fought over salt. Yeah. You know, it's it's a it's a really big and, deal. And by the way, I mean, you're, if you're somebody who's like. like uh, I know we're connected to, we're actually partners. We, I mean, excuse me, uh, um, investors, investors in LMNT. So obviously, uh, there's a motivation for us to steer people to LMNT. But listen, if fucking just salt your food. Yeah. Go out of the way to go get that. I mean, throw I, some sea salt yeah, in your water. In your water. Yeah. yeah exactly. I mean, if you if you, if it's like a, a money thing for you, where it's like, oh, it's ridiculous. Why am I paying this? Money? Then don't. Then you, then salt your food. The point, this, the, the science, the information, the point we're trying to make still stands true. Like that's something that people don't get enough of. What's nice about that and is that it's convenient. And it's it easy. Good. Yeah, you can it's rip also it open. Got it the tastes right, good. Pour right in. It's also got the right uh, ratio of magnesium to potassium because you want to have those a little bit of those as well. Well, but and you know, and you know, right? Like I mean, when I salt my food, like how much am I really getting? Like I'm not like weighing, measuring my salt, then putting yeah. it in there and going, oh, that's how many milligrams I have. Whole I natural food has more. very low sodium. Very low. Yeah, I mean, you'd have to eat processed food as an athlete to get the sodium that you probably need. And you know what's ter what's terrible, what you said, Justin, is that athletes don't know this. They think they're just dehydrated. Mm -hmm. So they just drink more water. Yeah. If you just drink more water, you'll actually throw your electrolyte balance off even It'll more. It'll be even worse, yeah. Even more. And yeah. this is where you'll get people drink water, drink water, and get dizzier and feel yes. shittier. I need more water. I need more water and feel worse and worse I mean, and worse. that's happened to me. Yeah. Like I said, that was the only protocol. And then they would weigh you, uh, you know, before practice and then after practice. And like, that's that was really the only, uh, the like, they were sort trying. of standards they had. Yeah, they were yeah. trying, but we were still, you know, having the effect. Dude, speaking of weighing, I just read about the longest fast in history. in the Longest fast? 
Yes, the longest time. 40 days and 40 nights. Somebody went without food. Someone beat Jesus? No, yeah, dude. <laughs> somebody Nobody crushed. Nobody beat Jesus. No, dude. Somebody dude. crushed Jesus. No song. way. No, you, what? No. Okay. How many? This was recorded, medically recorded, and it's in the Guinness Book of World Records. So Agostino uh, Barbieri, this was a Scottish man. He All was, right. uh, let's see, he lost 276 pounds. So he was a big dude. He was like 400 pounds. Whoa. Okay? He didn't eat. For 382 days. No way. 382 Just days. Just literally living off the reserves in his body. Yes. So he was 27 years wow. old. It was 1965. And he got, do his doctors monitored him. All he had was tea, electrolyte powder, multivitamin, and coffee is what I read. For 382 days, he only had those things, had nothing else, lost all that weight. And check this out. Trip off this. Every... Uh, 37 to 45 days, I think it was, he still pooped during that period of time. What? He was pooping his own fat. No. Ew. His body, and that's what he survived off of. He was so obese. And yeah. they show a before and after picture. It's just oil just dripping. Wow. Yeah, they show him before and well, after. I would have never even come close to guessing that. Yes. Isn't that r crazy? That's insane. So dude. they show him that he was- uh, You know what? what there is he that? is. Look at his before and after. What does that highlight for you? That how that, we ne how we think we go like, yeah. like I'm so hungry. I have I'm, to I'm eat, starving. you guys. I'm starving. <laughs> I was supposed to have lunch an hour ago. <laughs> yeah, <it's> like, <laughs> like, all you gotta do is be, yeah, bro. Oh, you can you go 360 like a, days. You'd be yeah. fine, <laughs> bro. How wild is that though? That's I got about a week that's, right here. That's fast. He survived off his own body, which obviously he had a lot of uh, body fat. Uh, he was he was a big dude, bro. The discipline to to stay on that like that for that long. Yeah, and so, like he must have made a commitment to himself. I'm gonna. Not eat until all of this weight. That's comes. exactly what he said. I'm, I'm not going to eat until all. He this said, weight. "I'm not going to eat until I hit my target weight." I wonder how long he actually struggled with it. You know, at a certain point, it was like it just did he did he have the education normal. or did he have somebody who was close to him that was like a doctor who said this is even possible? We'll monitor you. Oh no, sure. the whole time he got. That's why it's in the Guinness Book of World Records because he would go in every week and was getting monitored, measured, tested. They would test his blood, make sure he was okay. Look at his organs for, yeah. I mean, this was 1965, so it wasn't like, you know, this was when we had some, you know, some okay modern So medicine. I wonder, I wonder, uh, you know what would be really interesting is actually to see his labs with that. And I mean, someone that obese, I bet not eating for a very, very long time showed nothing but positive benefits, mm. right? Like I, you would start to see, like his cholesterol levels, blood pressure, all these things probably move in a really, really healthy direction for a long period of time. At what point did it hit the curve and come back the I other don't way? Know. If, or so, did it ever? That's interesting. I don't yeah, know. Yeah. Like, was he like bedridden for a long time? No. And then was he just moving around no, and not just, eating? No, he just lived his life. He didn't exercise. He just lived his life and just didn't eat and was able to. Now, what's crazy about that is, yes, it's 270 something pounds uh, over 384. So on average, how much weight was he losing per month? What is that, Doug? 386 divided by, what was it, two? Do we know what happened to him afterwards? Well, he died at 51. So mm. so he was 456 pounds when he went in. And he went in and he lost weight and got to 180 pounds. So he lost on average 12 ounces per day or 22 pounds every single month. So every month he lost on average 22 pounds by not eating. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, that's, we're gonna we're coming out we're coming out with a new diet called the Barbieri. <laughs> <diet>. <laughs> Super complex, yeah. water and coffee, dude. Yeah, you save money, download. you lose weight. <laughs> <laughs> it's super easy. Only one thing. Don't eat. Wow, I did not know. I didn't know there was anybody even close to that. Isn't that wild? Did you know? I mean, did you even? Would I you read about that. It? I read a long time ago. Oh, about you it. did. Yeah, and then and so then it sparked my like we were sitting here hanging out and I'm like, oh shit, I, I got to look that up because I'd be interested to bring up on the show. But sure enough, there it is. Wow. Yeah, pretty yeah, well. That's crazy. Anyway, we're supposed to mention uh, Organifi. I want to tell you guys that my um, we have a postpartum doula, and she's a vegetarian, and uh, I've been having her take the Organifi protein, and she's like, I, I wish somebody told me that eating more protein would be this would feel this good. Oh, wow. Yeah. She, I mean, a lot of people don't know. I they feel like, no yeah, there should be, we should be a bit more of evangelists in that sense in terms of like, you know, vegans. And then also too, like with like creatine, both of those combined, Organifi, creatine, like yeah. I feel like that's just such a, a must. Well, yeah. you know why? Because the vegan community pushes this, this over prescription of protein. And so yep. that makes you as, which is such a terrible message because 
most of my female clients, doesn't matter what they would label themselves, vegan or regular eater, omnivore, whatever, doesn't matter, under consumed protein, yep. especially if they were lifting weights and trying to build muscle and speed. Oh, I think up. she was eating like 50 grams a day. Yeah. So, and, and so then, so and then one, get, one shake is then like, you're an, told that it. like, oh, you don't need as much protein as they tell you. You don't need as much protein. It's like, that's such a terrible message. So, I mean, go for it, go be vegan. I'm all for it. Do it. But then make sure you get your protein up. You'll see a huge difference in how you feel, your muscle, your hair, all that yep. stuff. And like, then I have wild. my, my, uh, my brother-in-law, uh, same thing. He's jujitsu. Uh, he lifts weights every once in a while. He's been, he's training for a tournament that's coming up and I'm telling him, dude, just do the, do me a favor, dude, just bump your protein. He's like, aren't I going to gain body fat from adding the extra calories? I said, eat it first and then watch what happens. Sure enough. He's messaging me. He's like, bro, I got, I don't know why I don't always listen to you. He's like, I feel crazy. I feel great. I'm so much stronger. He's like, I'm leaner. I'm like I told you, he's like, how am I leaner? I said, well, the muscle probably burn the body fat. You're probably eating less. You don't even realize it. Because you're hitting your protein targets. Sal loves when people tell him that. I, know. <laughs> I don't know why I don't just listen to you all the time. Yeah. I just, just listen to you all the time. <laughs> you should. <laughs> yeah. Learn something. Hey, what's happening? There's a company we work with called Butcher Box. They deliver grass-fed meats and wild-caught fish to your door for incredible prices. If you uh, value your health and you like protein, you like meat, go to Butcher Box. It's a great company, and uh, they've got some giveaways. In fact, right now you can get three pounds a free-range organic chicken wings in every box for the life of your membership, plus $20 off your first order. If you're interested, go to butcherbox.com forward slash mind pump. All right, here comes the rest of the show. First caller is Len from Florida. Len, what's happening? How can we help you? Hey, how's it going, guys? Good, man. How are you? Good, thank you. Hey, uh, just want to start out with the obligatory, you know, thanks for everything you guys do. Um, you guys really kind of helped shape my uh, past couple months here. I've been listening for about a little background. I've been listening for about about a year. Uh, I've been really trying to take working out seriously now for like the past, you know, nine months or so. So uh, starting out, you know, I started out, of course, with the beach body type stuff. I know that's not the best thing to do, but uh, listening to you guys started more into strength training. Uh, the one thing I did like about the kind of the beach body type programming, though, was all the, um, the mobility stability stuff. So that kind of led me to get into your uh, priming, you know, your prime and pride pro. So I bought both of those here over the Christmas, uh, you know, or the Black Friday holiday sale. And just kind of some questions about how to work that into my programming. Um, you know, it, it makes a lot of sense, you know, like if I was running like a traditional like split type programming, you know, like chest in, you know, triceps. Okay, you know, I can prime my chest, I can prime my triceps, you know, it makes for a pretty easy day, but kind of just that. Uh, how that works, you know, like with the full body type programming that, you know, we've been utilizing now, um, you know, cause I, I'm in aesthetic now. I ran maps, uh, anabolic before. So, you know, I'm just kind of wondering what, what does a prime in session look like for a full body type, uh, routine with the uh, prime pro and prime, uh, programs. Yeah, you good question. Well, you'd love good question. Mass performance says, uh, you know, there's mobility sessions program name, just like you would see in aesthetic for the focus sessions for the days in between for active recovery. So just in terms of like the easiest way to to see how that gets programmed in, you know, that's one example, but, uh, you know, in okay. terms of like the prime program itself, that's really setting you up uh, for your individualized needs in terms of like any kind of dysfunction, any kind of restriction you might have, uh, joint wise, uh, you're going to be able to pinpoint that with our tests in there. Yeah. It depends on the person. So, um, when you get maps prime, there's a compass test in there. You take the yes. test and you see pass or fail, and then that'll tell you what your priming session looks like. So, my priming session for a full body workout would look different than Justin's or Adam's, right? I may need more thoracic mobility, which thoracic mobility is needed for almost every upper body exercise and even lots of lower body exercises like squats, right? So based on the compass test, you will have your priming session and that's your quote unquote warm up. Now, Prime Pro, you want to pick your areas of concern, the areas that you feel like you need the most mobility, like shoulders, wrist, hands, ankles, hips, whatever. And then those you do as much as you want. You yeah. pick one or two movements from that area. Let's say it's your hips and you pick two mobility movements for your hips. Anytime you have five minutes, get on the floor or you know use a bench or a chair and do five minutes of mobility. And that can be done as frequently okay. as you want. You don't, you don't have to do it before, during, or after a workout. You're... Your personality as far as, uh, you know, are you the type of person that like, oh, give me all these lists of things and I'm going to execute and do all of them or, oh, I'm trying to build consistency would matter how I 
respond to something like this, right? So if you go through the the prime, prime is going to show you like all these areas where you fail. It'll direct you over to these movements or what you want to address. Now, what happens a lot is most people actually fail all three and then there's a whole host of things that they need to do. And then, yeah. and, and then they they get a little overwhelmed with all the different things for them to prime or all the mobility work to do. And then it makes them kind of inconsistent. Now, what I personally like to do or teach people to do is to pick two, three at best uh, prime movements that make the biggest difference in your performance in the gym and really hammer those home and, and, be, practice, them and practice them and practice them and be, okay. be consistent with it. And then over time, we can start to add other ones that also assist it. But so for example, for me, like the combat stretch, absolutely necessary for me to be able to get into a deep, good squat. And it, it's a night and day difference when I do it and I don't do it. So that check, I got, I've got to do that. Uh, when I'm benching, I absolutely have to, you know, thoracic mobility really prime my upper back. So my shoulders stay in place like I want them to be. And so that that's a must. And then also doing some sort of, uh, you know, either wall circles or zone one to really prime my shoulder. So they're mm -hmm. stable and in position for when I'm doing upper body exercise, like any shoulder presses or just, those are like my three. Now I work 90 nineties. I, I, I love scorpions. I do all these other things too, but the, the three I've nailed down that make the biggest impact on how well my performance is in, in, in the gym are the ones that like or I'm religious about. And mm -hmm. so I tend to teach it that way. It's like, you know, pick up a couple okay. of them that you know you can feel a difference and it helps and get really good at being consistent with that. And then over time, start to build in the other ones if you can, if that That's makes great sense. Great advice. Do you, do you have mass performance, other way, by the way? Because I know Justin mentioned that. I think you'd love a program like that. Yeah. Yeah, no, I don't. I just have uh, the Prime Prime Pro Anabolic and Aesthetic right now. So, yeah. I'm going to send you performance because performance is uh, movement that. focused. Yeah. If you really like mobility and movement, I mean, that's the program for you. Mm -hmm. it, yeah. You know, like I'm not really into this to like, you know, like look better. I mean, I, you know, I'm getting 45 years old. I'm more about this how I feel, you know. So my my fear is, I guess, you know, if I quit doing kind of like a full body type, you know, prime mobility, stability type thing. Like I don't, you know, like I know that my areas are my shoulders and my upper back, you know, my thoracic area, but I don't want to lose, you know, like hamstring mobility, you know, you know, for instance. So I just kind of was, yeah. So yeah, no, I, I totally relate what you're saying, Adam. So, you know, thanks for that. Yeah. And I, and I actually, Justin hit it, uh, listening to you even more now, you could performance is made for you, bro. Mm -hmm. You're going to love performance that it is the single program of all the programs that uh, we talk about that I think that you could like run over and over and over and really kind of hit never never have it's very issues. much yeah. just geared towards movement and uh you know addressing joints uh uh issues and and reinforcement and it's it's, it's the one that's going to take you you know into your your latter years like feeling great nice nice okay yeah I'll uh definitely look forward to that you yeah. got it man awesome thanks Len well thanks for your time I, I appreciate you guys no problem thank you Len right you know, the irony of what he said is, uh, he's like, I just want to feel good, which the irony of that is that's how he's going to look good. Yeah, yeah, right? uh, totally. Like, yeah, you train that's to feel the good in a healthy way, right? You train to feel good, you're going to look good. You always train to look good, you end up not feeling good, which then means you'd end up not looking good. You know what I wish I would have asked him? I wish I would have asked him this because it's interesting to me that he bought Prime Prime Pro, Anabolic, and Aesthetic, but not performance yeah. when he, like performance was written for him. Right. So I would, from a marketing standpoint, selfishly, yeah, I'd like to- where was our disconnect there? Yeah, where, where, did we do, where did we do a bad job of not delivering that message to somebody like that? He's obviously aware enough to pick up Prime and Prime Pro for the mobility and stuff like that reasons, but to, to miss out on performance when literally he is like perfect for that. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I, I'm curious to why- uh, why the other ones and, and not that one? Because I think he's going to absolutely uh, love that program. And we do get asked a lot the the prime questions of like because what happens is most people will fail that test and then they then they then they go and they see all the exercises and priming movements they should do to address it, and it can be a bit overwhelming. And with my clients, it, it was always hard to get them to do the the little tedious work, right? The 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 stretching, the mobility stuff, right. the foam rolling. And what I learned over years of coaching people was, even though I know they need all of these things and, and that that's ideal, 
a better strategy is to implement the one or two that uh, make the biggest difference for them. The one that I can do and they go, Whoa, I feel it's like, okay, let's hammer that. Let's No, I love that point. And I think it's, it's easiest to figure that out if you have a a coach kind of uh, helping you determine which ones, but otherwise, you know, if you're doing this yourself to really just kind of go through, you know, some of those, most of those exercises and, and really feel your way through it, feel which one has the most impact. Yes. Stick with that one. And like, like you said, simplify it. But really, if you possible. go into Prime and you read the instructions, if you fail all three, it tells you what to do. If you fail one, it tells you what it to does, do. It does. So it'll tell you. And then, you know, within that category, then you pick the ones that give you the biggest impact. Yep. Our next caller is John from California. John, what's happening? How can we help you? Hey, how's it going, guys? Good, man. Uh, right. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for taking the time to answer my questions. And uh, thank you for all the amazing information you guys put out there. It's, it's been really helpful. Awesome. Um, my situation has evolved since I submitted my question. So, would you like me to stick to my original question or kind of? Oh, no, let's, let's, well, let's hear it. On now. Well, you can riff, Why don't man. you, yeah, go, to you. go yeah. off your original and then tell us how it changed? Okay. Uh, so, I finished power lift. Um, now it was three weeks ago, but uh, two weeks ago. Uh, so, and I felt great throughout the program. Um, I started symmetry right after that, and uh, my body hasn't been feeling as good. Uh, I have more aches and pains, and my lower back's been pretty sensitive. And uh, so I was wondering if this was a common thing or um, if I should just keep going with symmetry. Um, and, yeah, I haven't been sleeping well as e- either because of the minor aches and pains. Um, the evolution has been the aches and pains have gotten better, and my lower back feels better but then I'm experiencing a lot of pain in my kind of trap area. And so I went to see a physical therapist and he mentioned that it might be like a, a disc issue. So I'm getting an MRI in a week. Okay. Um, so yeah, I'm kind of wondering where to go from there. I, I obviously want to avoid surgery at all costs. Um, and I just listened to a guy named Shane on the last episode you guys put out and he, experience sounds like similar issues so yeah kind of where to go from here so john um when you do something new if the if it highlights imbalances and the intensity is too high for you and your imbalances you can start to experience aches and pains so i'm gonna i'm I'm gonna I, i think what's happening is you probably before symmetry did you train mostly bilaterally barbells dumbbell like traditional strength training Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Even, yeah. Even before I started power lift, I, I was always bilateral. Okay. So mm-hmm. like if you balance on one foot or you're doing one arm stuff, like your, your joints have to stabilize and balance stress, yeah. differently than they did before. So what I would say, if you were my client, is I would say cut way back on the intensity with symmetry because it, it's opening things up or highlighting things. And it's, you're probably training too hard for where your body's at in the context of the program. So you might not get the muscle burn, the pumps that you're expecting, but that's okay. We're allowing your joints and stability to catch up. So I'd slow down and go easier um, in map symmetry. And in fact, you're already seeing some of those old aches and pains start to get better because yeah, I was things gonna, started to balance I was going to say, I think he's already starting to see what, what what's going to happen if you keep going that way. Yeah. It's going to get better. I but, think but, gonna- but the intensity is probably a little too high for, for you know, what your, what your body's looking for. And then, yeah. you know, as far as a disc issue is concerned, of course you want to make sure that, you know, um, that you're, you're okay to exercise, but go easier. Mm-hmm. That's the that's what I would suggest. Go easier <laughs> yeah. with that. <laughs> that's a hard thing to tell somebody. Yeah. That's a power lift. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, so John, yeah, here's that's... what happens with a lot of people when they do, when they go, um, you know, uh, when they go, uh, you know, on one side when they stop bilateral exercise and they start doing one arm or one leg, is that they have a tough time with the with going lighter and they tend to compromise technique and form without realizing it to try to be able to lift the amount of weight or with the type of intensity that they're used to with bilateral exercise. So if you always bench press with a barbell and now you're going to go on a bench or whatever with one dumbbell and you're used to a certain amount of CNS output and Mm -hmm. driving, you're not going to get that with one arm yet because there's a lot of balance that's involved. Like the the limiting factor is not the weight. The limiting factor is going to be the stability and the balance. Your form has to be perfect. If your form's not perfect 
on both sides, yeah. then you're all you're gonna do is strengthen and balances. You're not gonna correct. You're that. so strong in in other directions, and in, in you know to be able to now place yourself in a position where your body <laughs> has to stabilize and account for a lot more balance and um, you know uh, this this unilateral uh, type of stability is gonna be completely different in the in the you know, the bracing and, and the core and, and everything else, all these like little um, secondary muscles are going are gonna to be worked a bit harder than they were, you know, previous to that, which is then going to, you know, it, so that's just something to consider in terms of like going too intense. It really will uh, play into like how you feel afterwards. Listen, this is actually, John, this is actually really common. Yeah. Uh, when you, especially when you, if you would consider yourself or if you identified as kind of like a power lifter type of guy, if you've trained most of your life, with that kind of mentality, the way you hit the weights, we're really kind of asking you to completely shift the way you think and the way you approach them. And that's hard if you've been a consistent lifter for a long time and lifted a certain way, uh, just as like it's really difficult to get a bodybuilder to lift like a power lifter who's lifted like a bodybuilder for his whole life. And then now you go, hey, you're going to do your first powerlifting meet. And he does it with all these weird short range emotions. And like he doesn't, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And he doesn't know how to drive right. his legs. Like, I mean, so that the same is true for them. And so as you approach into symmetry and then probably should do a program like performance to follow it up, like you have to, it's really the mentality as you go into it, which is tough for a big, strong guy is to like be obsessed with, uh, the, the control and the movement and, you know, almost look at it in this like artistic way and make, making the movement look pretty, <laughs> so, which is, you, you got to kind of think. It's a totally it, different well, workout. It, I think too. Again, I know that sounds really weird and funny, but it, like, yeah. that's how much you have to shift the way you look at your training. Now it's not about how, how heavy is the dumbbell that you're holding on to, And it's more of like, how perfectly can I make my left side look like my right side, you know, and, and keeping it controlled through the whole movement and slowing it down. Yeah. Well, I think even like, so you did our maps power lift, like even Ben Pollock, who uh, is this very accomplished power lifter, then, you know, goes to do a split stance movement, right? And, and just start working on getting better at that. That was a big struggle for him. Oh, he was a 700 pound squatter. And he's the, like one of the strongest guys out there. And he was doing 135 uh, split stance and you could see- in his Shaking like a leaf. It was very tough for him because it was totally mm -hmm. new. So in other words, in other, to put it differently, John, the limiting factor here is not how much weight you can lift. The limiting factor is how, how stable you can be during the lift. Your stability will go far before your strength does. So you'll be able to handle way heavier dumbbells, but your stability is not going to be so great and you can cause yourself some problems. So your technique is the limiting factor. And what Adam said is exactly right. Perfect, perfect, perfect technique. Uh, matching right to left, going slow, going controlled. Total, total different mentality. That's a hard switch. It's hard to go from power lift to symmetry. That's going to be a very difficult switch because it's totally different mentality. Mm -hmm. Now, at the end of, of symmetry, well, you your got your five by five. Tremendously. The last phase is five by five. If you feel amazing, go into it. If you still feel like, oh, then I would go back through symmetry and then go into that last phase on that, that second time around. It's tough when you're the strong dude, man. I mean, nothing's more humbling than, you know, being a guy <laughs> who, can, who can bench press, you know, 315 plus, no problem. And then I'm asking you to use like 40 pound dumbbell presses, like, you know, and you're doing something that you're like, oh my God, I feel like yep. my, my wife can do this. This is bullshit. You know, it's like, <laughs> you have to like, you have to like get rid of that, bro. You ha it's, and it's tough, <laughs> man. So weights. it is, but it is common. And, and, uh, and it also is actually highlighting a really Really good thing there's lots of of opportunity here for you and if if you can get your the if you can shift the mentality and lift like this for a while uh it's really going to serve you and you'll come back yep. even stronger so uh, i mean I, I think what you're feeling and going through is is your body talking to you and telling you like this is needed we need to do this and it's it's gonna suck for the ego for a little bit but i promise you it'll right. serve you in the in the long run that's right john do you have mass performance because i'd like you to follow up yes Symmetry of performance. I do. Yeah, I have symmetry and performance. Okay. So yeah. that was kind of my yeah. next question is, um, that would be, so next. you think sim finish symmetry and cause the caller before Shane, he, you mentioned to skip the bar, the bar, the five by five section of symmetry based on his issue. And he, so, yeah, but he had, you, do he you actually, think I should, he I should assess had, how I feel. 
Well, oh, John, John yeah, potentially had, yes. Yeah, potentially he, yes. Yeah, he had a he actually had surgery. You haven't been diagnosed yet. If you get diagnosed with herniated disc or something like that, then yes, I would have you do. I would have you avoid that last phase. Yeah. But okay. if you but if you feel good, go for it. Go go ahead and test it and enjoy it and see how it is. But I mean, it would be one of those things. And I tell you what, why don't we do this, John? I'll have I'll have Doug put you in the private forum, and then just keep us posted. So as you get as you get further along the program. Uh, and get closer after you get diagnosed. Shoot us a message in there. Just tag tag uh, one or all of us and let us know uh, what the diagnosis was and or how you're feeling through the program. Yep. And then we can give you some some tips from there. Okay, excellent. Sounds awesome. All right, man. Right on, John. All right, thank you, guys. Right. That's funny you brought up that video with uh, with Ben. I remember that. He was, yeah, it was 135. This guy who squat 700 pounds, like one of the strongest guys out there, and it was so hard. Because and it looked just, awkward as fuck. Watching it did him do because it. he's never done. Now obviously <laughs> well, he just doesn't do it. Obviously yeah. he has the actual force. He's got the strength to lift more yeah. than that. But in that position, his stability was the limiting. Uh, you know, and uh, and what will happen? Like I'm, I can, I'm visualizing like a you know a power lifter that's used to lifting in some serious way. You know, and then they go to you know one arm dumbbell press or something like that, and you have this tendency to. I mean, he probably John probably has the strength to press hundred pound dumbbells over his head. Easy, yeah. easy, because he's got the strength to do it. But then he's overcompensating to the left uh -huh, or right yeah. or, or, or torquing something. And, and all then, the, the stabilizers right. right. support. Yeah, that's right. And then the low back is like firing like crazy. Crazy, and he's just like, why is it causing this these issues? And it's like, you know, you're you're approaching the lift like you would. I remember the first yeah. time I did a Bulgarian split stance squat. I <laughs> and I didn't do it again for years because you know, so hard in the gym. I was squat oh, it's three. Painful the soreness you get after that. Uh, too. I do. I'd squat three hundred plus pounds in the gym, no problem. And then I go to do a Bulgarian split stance squat and twenty pound dumbbells. Yeah. 20 pound dumbbells and I was hurting. I was like, I'm not doing this. This is embarrassing. I guarantee you, supporting cast muscles are just really totally you know sore. Our next caller is Christine from Arkansas. Hi, Christine. How can we help you? Hi, guys. How's it going? Very good. Great. Good. Um, so I am a personal trainer, and I have currently uh, have a client who is a middle-aged male, and he has major instability in his shoulders. So um, I've been putting him on machines because he's comfortable with having, you know, having that... Um, how would you say, I guess, um, stability support, the support and the stability, and it gives him more confidence doing things like that. But if I attempt to use dumbbells or bands or anything of that sort, he just gets really frustrated and just feel, it feels defeated. And I, that's not my goal. My goal is to get him stronger, motivate him, keep him engaged. But, um, you know, so at what point should I kind of veer away from machines and move into using free weights. I mean, ideally or should right I now. Just, yeah. Well, ideally he'd already, you already, you would make him do that stuff, but I mean that we have to talk about uh, adherence too. Right. So there's, there, this is right. the, this is the great juggle for trainers, right? I know what he needs. Uh, right. But I also recognize that he may hate this or not want to do this. And so, you know, that's, that's probably one of the, the greatest challenges as a coach and trainer is, this is why Sal talks a lot about um, the the number one quality of a trainer is sales, and not because you have to re-sign him and sell him on more training, but you're selling your ideas to him right. all the time, and you've got to find a way to be able to communicate to him communicate to him that he needs that that stability component. He the machine is working as a crutch for his issues, right? So he has this instability right. problem in the shoulders. So of course, sitting on a machine is much easier because the machine is stable, but that we're now we're not addressing the root cause of what is going on here. And if your goal is to get strong with me and lose body fat, whatever his goals are, right. uh, and you want the longevity and you want to feel good as you get even older, um, this is what we need to do. And Hey, it sucks at the beginning because it's just like anything you like, I don't know what his job is, but I always love to give analogies related to whatever their job is. If he's like a computer tech guy, it's like, you know, you're, you're wanting to write code. It's your first day in school of learning how to do that. And so of, of, of course I can have a, I could crutch you and have a teacher give you all the answers, but then you're never right. going to learn how to do it. So th this is your body. And what we're trying to do right now is, and, and understand that you're expecting to be able to write code right away and be really good at it. No, you're going to suck for a little bit. So yeah. Yeah. Right. I, I, yeah. And I think, I think somewhat there's a fear to like uh, trainers that it's going to be boring and tedious and that they're going to um, leave and um, not get any benefit where your biggest benefit is to be able to kind of 
uh, in- include the uh, the entertainment, the enjoyment of coming in, but also like really dive into that. Like this is a very glaring issue that you can right. solve and address uh, and not, you know, yes, there's good mobility movements. And I'm sure if you haven't already and you've gone through like our, our prime tests and our prime pro and all of these things that we've kind of laid out as free resources or even our programs uh, that can address like some shoulder stability issues. Um, you can also load and just start gradually where, you know, you have them hold in certain positions and overhead and just an isometric just to get that. Okay. Yeah. So you, so he just gets that sort of, um, he gets like acclimated to that, that top position. And then also, uh, you know, in the rack position and then also, um, you know, down for, let's say like a suitcase carry. So what I like to do is like add a bit of movement with that while they're also like just focused on stabilizing and, and making sure that they're reinforcing that. So with, with a little bit of load and you can gradually increase that load while the entire goal of it is stability. So it's still something engaging right. and fun, but now we're like addressing that very specific. I love yeah. that. Like overhead carries right. would be phenomenal. Iso- isometrics is going to be the way to go. But look, okay. you have two jobs as a trainer. That's why I like talking to trainers because you really have two jobs. Job one is get them to do what's right for them. But yeah. job two is more important is get them to want to do what's right for them. Okay. Right. So we, you need to sell this to him that you have to sell this. Now there's two ways I could sell this. I could say, Hey, if you don't do this, you're going to hurt yourself and you're not going to be able to progress and you really need this and that's boring and blah, blah, blah. And that's not selling it to him. Does he want to yeah. build muscle? Christine, what's his goal? What are his goals? Well, he wants to lose belly fat. So I'm like, okay, stop being a cardio bunny, you know, stop, mm-hmm. get off the machines and start lifting okay. weights. Here's, you what, know? Here, here's what you're going to do. This is what you're going to do next time you see him. You're going to go up to him, be like, all right, you want to get lean. Okay. Here's the best way to get lean. I've, I've, I did a lot of research and I've come up with the best way to get lean. And what we're going to do is we're going to build maximum muscle. We're going to speed up your metabolism and it's going to make the fat loss a lot easier. You want to do that? Yes, I do. Great. This is what we're going to do. And then you're done. You got to sell him on what he wants and you're not lying. That's the truth. This is the fastest, most effective way to get him there. So you can do the negative stuff like, Oh, you need to do this and we got to go slow and you got to crawl before you walk. And he's a guy and he's not going to hear that. He doesn't want to hear that. And and that's more difficult being a female trainer with a male, you know, he, he wants to look good, you know, he he wants to look strong. Like it's, I, (laughs) listen, you go up to him and say, you want to get lean and you want to build muscle. Yes, I do. All right. This is what we're going to do. Yeah, he's going to feed off your confidence and you got to sell him on the result. I really think what I think Justin hit it really. The more I hear you and the more I'm, I think I'm piecing together this guy, um, it, I'm assuming that the you know, kind of tedious, uh, you know, isometric mobility type work is he feels, this, especially if he's like a cardio move sweat guy, is probably right. feeling like this is stupid. Why am I laying on the ground doing this prone cobra thing? And he's probably right. not enjoying that. I think being able to load him, like Justin is saying, so he's challenged a little bit strength wise, but then you're really focusing on that stability component. Oh, I see overhead carries. I mm-hmm. I see overhead carries. And, you know, if you've got kettlebells, that'd be great. If not, dumbbells over his head yeah. and then being very meticulous about how he's how he's moving. Is his core tightened up? Is his glutes engaged? Is he stepping and like be real meticulous about how he's doing that as he's holding it? And then just you know, try and get stronger and stronger every week by loading that more and more. And so you're working on the stability, but then you're also giving him this kind of strength exercise so he doesn't feel like he's lying on the ground and doing yeah. nothing. And, you know? cl- and clients, listen, clients love it when the trainer tells them what to do and says, just do what I tell you. They love it. We're so afraid <laughs> to do that to our clients and it's mm-hmm. silly. It's like we're asking our clients, hey, do you want to do this thing? Is this okay? Hey. Yeah. No, right. you don't ask him nothing. John, this is what we're going to do today. I don't want to do that. I don't care what you want. You told me you want to get buffed, then we're going to do this. I know yeah. what I'm doing. Yeah. And you know what? They're going to be like, oh, fuck, I'm going to listen to this guy. Yeah. <laughs> That's what they want to hear. They want, they, yeah. they want you to tell them. They They want you to tell them what to do. I've never had a client ever in 25 years where I would say that and they would still be like, I don't want They'd be like, all right, I'll do it. And then eventually, after two or three times of me telling them, you're going to do it my way because you told me what you want and I'm going to get you where you want to go. After two or three times doing that, they stop asking me, especially when they start to see the results. So remember right. that. You got to sell it that way. Sell it that way. You're not going to have any problems. Okay. All right. Good deal. Listen, you're a, tra- <laughs> you're a trainer. Do you have Maps Prime Pro? I do not. All right. I'll send that to you. Relax. Adam. Oh, I appreciate that. Thank you so much. <laughs> Don't get mad, Adam. I'll send you Prime Pro. That'll, that'll be very valuable for your clients. Yeah. All right. Appreciate that. Thank you. No problem. All right. 
You know, just speaking to female trainers who train men, oftentimes, not always, but oftentimes they go into the relationship automatically feeling insecure or not confident because it's a man, I'm going to tell him how he's going to build muscle. He might get stronger than me. How am I going to spot him? He's not going to want to listen to me. They feed off of your confidence or your insecurity or your hesitation. Mm -hmm. If you're, I don't care if you're a man or a woman, you tell the person, follow me, we're doing this. They're going to, people hire you because that's what they want. They want to follow. They want to feel that confidence. If you hesitate, imagine you go to the doctor and the doctor says, well, I mean, you know, we what do you can want? do this and we can't do <laughs> that. Do you and I don't know. You'd be like, I don't know what to do. But if he's like, no, you got to take this. This is what you got to do. You'd be like, thank you, doc. I appreciate you being confident and giving me the answer. Yeah, and the, I hate pills. Well, do you want to get better? Yeah, I do. Okay, take the goddamn yeah. pills. That's. I mean, I, yeah, if I had a doctor I mean, talk to me, like, like, that's you at ease. I this mean, that's great. the same thing. It's like, oh, okay. I don't like to. I mean, All right. you, you you want to build muscle. You want to lose your body fat, right? Okay, well, these are the things we need to do. I, I is, literally, when I would say that, literally, they would, oh, I don't know if I want to do that. Well, you want to build muscle? All right, then this is what we're going to do. And I would walk away towards <laughs> the piece of equipment we're going to use. And they would follow me and do it. But they uh, feed off that energy. Yeah, I mean, it's really how you, and it is, this is not a uh, man woman thing it doesn't even matter that she's no. a female it's literally the the confidence it's that she confidence de- she though, delivers yeah. it to him and oh, i've had lots of female trainers that just yeah. they just crushed it yeah but I, and, and this that. this challenge for trainers is definitely uh i i saw it on both sexes totally. all the time totally. and it's it's literally just a, a lack of confidence and maybe your abilities or yeah. your knowledge or like that and you got to be assertive and if you if you want them to trust you and to do it it just I mean, don't be afraid to say, this is what we're going to do. And it's because you told me you want X, Y, and Z. This is the path. That's it. Our next caller is Kelly from North Carolina. Kelly, how's how's it going? How can we help you? I'm doing great. Thank you guys so much for having me on. I really appreciate it. Um, I have been listening for about five months now. uh, And in fact, my kids are tired of me always having you guys on either on uh, YouTube while I'm working out or uh, in the car. Um, So they've said you have to use iPod now. So, um, <laughs> Sorry, so they don't have to hear it yeah. too. Um, but I just wanted to uh, ask you some questions about um, reverse dieting. So I had been a, a chronic dieter most of my life. Um, in my email, I mentioned uh, a nickname I had as a kid. So I was an overweight kid. And so having a name that rhymes with belly is not fun. Um, so I about uh, a year ago, I started to really gain a lot of weight. Um, I got to the point that I was just doing so much cardio. I was eating about um, 1,100 to 1,200 calories a day. Uh, and just was like, I can't stop. I can't lower my calories and I can't uh, increase my cardio anymore. So I kind of found out about the reverse dieting. I got um, hooked into you guys. I got the reverse dieting um, guide. And I uh, had a, some initial weight gain, which I understood. Like, I, okay, the guy tells me that. You guys tell me that all the time. Um, but now I've gotten to about 1,700-ish calories. And every time I try to increase beyond that, A, it's really hard because I'm like full and I have to eat like crappy food in order to try and get the calories in, or um, I immediately shoot up even more in weight. So I know I'm getting stronger. I've got uh, maps. Uh, uh, the RGB and I um, completed anabolic. I just finished the first week of performance and I know I'm getting stronger, um, but I am also finally being able to uh, kind of monitor my uh, body fat percentage and it's starting to creep up. And so I'm like, okay, am I gaining more fat than muscle? Same amount? Because I mean, I trust you guys. If you tell me like this is just part of the process suck it up that's fine or do i need to do kind of like mini cuts because i've also heard adam say sometimes you do like a mini cut and then maybe you try and reverse further out of it yeah kelly when you so i'm reading your email um so you went from 1100 calories to about 1700 calories and during that period of time gained three pounds on the scale also what happened with the the cardio were you doing a lot of cardio before and then not so much anymore what does that look like yeah so um Per your recommendations that I've always heard and the reverse dieting, I stopped doing the cardio. I am doing about twelve, uh, about twelve hundred to fifteen hundred, um, uh, st- uh, twelve thousand to fifteen thousand steps a day. Okay, so but you, what, but you only went up three pounds. Yeah, I was gonna say, please yeah. commend her on what you've actually accomplished a lot more than you probably think is that, you have. Is that That's true? A lot of activity you cut out. Is that true? You so only, you went up three. Pounds I went or? up. So I immediately went up three pounds. So like. 
before I got to you guys, I had found reverse dieting first somewhere else. And um, as soon as I started reverse dieting, I dropped a few pounds and then um, I added creatine and jumped up three pounds. And I was like, okay, that's the creatine. Cool. I went from carbs that were like 50% to carbs that were more like 30% with appropriate protein. So I was like, okay, that makes sense. But since then I have um, slowly, like I continue to increase. So I'm about 10 pounds more total than I was eight to 10 pounds more than I was a year ago. And also okay. stronger and stronger. Yeah, I think you, and stronger. Yeah, I, yeah, I'm definitely stronger, but like the, the clothes are starting to get a little tighter. You yeah. Know, that sort of thing. Well, okay. So first off, you gotta, you gotta think about, look at where the clothes are tighter. If it's in your butt, uh, you know, in the upper thighs, then you're probably building um, some muscle and you're stronger. So you're definitely building some muscle. The little bit of weight gain that you had when you reverse diet is nothing considering you went up 600 calories yes. and you and you got rid of cardio. Yes. Yeah. That's exceptional. Mm -hmm. Now, here's the deal, okay? I want you to get rid of your scale for a little while. I don't want you to weigh yourself anymore because it's going to mess with your head a little bit. You got to give yourself a little bit more time. And yes, gaining some body fat, a little bit of body fat is part of the process. I'd like to see you get up to close to 2,000 calories and then cut from there. Now, you're, one thing you said, though, is that you can't eat anymore. You feel like you're stuffing yourself. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. If that's yeah. the case and you feel like, ooh, this is really tough, then it's okay to go on a mini cut. You can do a mini cut for two weeks or three weeks and then go back to- Or even a week. Yeah, or even a week. Now, here's what I want you to do, though, okay. or to understand. Don't expect to lose any weight in your mini cut. People go into a mini cut thinking, oh, great, I'm going to see some weight loss. That may not happen. What we're looking for is your appetite to get reinvigorated so we could go back into the reverse diet, okay? But because you okay. dieted for so long, on and off, since you were a kid, the reverse diet process, meaning reverse dieting, maybe with some mini cuts, trying to build muscle this entire time, is gonna take a little longer than you think. Because you know there's some theories out there, but some people would say your, your CNS, your body's got a bit of a memory, and it's going to adapt in the negative very quickly as soon as you try and do a cut. So I would slowly work up towards getting up to about 2,000 calories before trying to do a longer than mini cut. I, I want to ask a little bit more. I know you have the RGB bundle. I, I think I'm reading that you ran through anabolic already. Are you currently in performance? Is that what's going on? Yeah, I just finished the first um, week of phase one. Um, and even in that, like I, it was amazing from what my... Um, starting strength and anabolic was to my first heavy week of performance was. Oh, so I'm already squatting more than my body weight. I can um, wow. uh, deadlift um, uh, all, close to one and a half of my body weight already. Wow. Wait, hold yeah. on. Where yeah. did you go You're from? When strong. You, when yeah. you first started squatting, do you, can you tell me how much weight you were squatting versus what you so can squat I now? was, I was, I mean, I was, I, I wasn't completely naive to, to, um, uh, lifting weight, but most of it was like cardio lifting weight because it was like body pump. Yeah. Um, so uh, I had been lifting weights before. Uh, so I was about 120. I was um, uh, squatting and you guys are the ones who convinced me to actually go below uh, parallel. So I'm below parallel. I'm the deepest I've ever been. I've yeah, got I um, prime. I've pa passed all the, the compass uh, stuff, but I've been working on the ankle mobility. And so like, I can get, get super low with good control. Um, it feels so good to be able to be at like, uh, I, I squatted um, this week. 160. <laughs> wow. You got I, way you, deeper. You yeah, be yeah, 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 just so you know, Kelly, if you were my client and you came into me saying this, I would shake you. This is a, a big bit. win. <laughs> I would shake you like this a little bit and say, you need to wake up. You're yeah. actually doing really fucking good. You're moving good. in the right Crushing direction. And, and keep in mind, like, uh, you've gone up 600 calories. So even, uh, you're going to even hold, your body's going to hold a little bit more water than it's used to, too. So even the little bit of what you might be seeing is like, oh, I feel like I'm putting it's, on a little bit. Yeah, four pounds of that is water yeah a lot of that's okay. probably water weight the fact that you are as strong as you are you've increased your range of motion you've cut your cardio out we've up to 600 cal i mean you are fucking yeah. winning right Hold on, we're, we're doing really, really well. let, me, let yeah. me put this in context kelly you increased your calories by over 50 percent so 600 calories is a lot for anybody to go up but in context of the fact that you're eating 1100 calories doing tons of cardio and you couldn't lose any weight it was like, that's where you were stuck at. You drop the cardio and increase your calories by over 50%. 
That's phenomenal. You're, you're, you're not just moving in the right direction. You're flying. Yeah, you, you're, you're killing right it. And the reason why I was asking more about the programming and stuff like that is, um, you know, keep trusting the process because I bet as you go through the different phases of performance and then aesthetic, you're going to hit a really novel one that's going to probably st stimulate the appetite again. It's interesting when we, when, yeah, we do, good point. when we do things that yeah. are somewhat familiar for us and then all of a sudden we hit something that's like, oh my God, I've never done these yeah. movements or boy, this is kicking my ass. And then all of a sudden you see that appetite spike up also. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I'd probably be pushing mm -hmm. you to be stay the course. I think you're doing a great job. Doesn't mean that I wouldn't potentially interrupt one week of low calorie just for the mental part of it for you to but be But don't like, weigh yourself. Yeah, but I, I'm not. I'm not tripping okay. on the scale. Where what, what I see or what I'm hearing from you. Uh, how long? I'm, let me ask you this: How long have you been doing this? How long did it take you to go from 1100 to now? One year, she said. Is this a year process? Uh, this uh, the reverse diet started in September. Of September. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're not even okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Kelly, yeah. I'll tell you a story. I had a client <laughs> who was really, really bad shape in the sense that her metabolism was just in the context of slowing down was just a wreck. Okay. It took us a year and a half. And here's what happened. That year and a half process, it was kind of like this. She gained a little bit, and then we were just kind of maintaining and maintaining and slowly reversing and getting stronger and getting stronger. And then like a snowball, all of a sudden, it was like she got ripped. Her body just, she just like, oh my God, this is crazy, Sal. I'm eating more, and I'm just getting leaner. I don't know what's going on. I'm like, we have got things working. Yeah. So you got to have some, you started in you're, September. And you're on, that, you're on that path. Yeah, give it some time. Yeah, you're on that you're, path. You're, right you're yeah, gonna, I, was, I was hoping that you guys would just say, like, just trust, continue to trust the process, and I was just getting a little too yes. ahead of myself. There yeah. is, no, there is no, nothing. I would, I would shake the shit out of you. That's yeah, there's nothing that you said <laughs> here. <laughs> there's nothing that you said here. In a loving way. That's yeah. how you got it. Remember, you almost got very, fired. Very very loving way. Yeah. Yeah. Just shakes his clients. Yeah. Uh, that you, there's nothing you said at all that would make me pause. In fact, okay. everything you're telling me is telling me that you're crushing. Yeah. You're like on the right path. So, yeah. so stay yeah. on. Do we have time for one more question? Sure. Let's hear it. Okay. So um, I know you guys have talked about it in the past, the fact that, you know, clinicians are out there giving um, advice on uh, exercise and diet. And unfortunately, we don't have a lot of uh, great education on that. I'm a practicing neurology PA um, and I'm very interested. I also happen to have a PhD in neuroscience. So I'm very interested in aging and cognition and um, how our, our, our hardware, our body helps the, the software in our mind. Mm -hmm. So um, where would I go to get good education? Because I mean, yeah, there's like the the, the guidelines for 150 minutes of mm. exercise. Do you follow Andrew but, Huberman? No. Oh, oh he's good. there you go. Yeah, Andrew you're going to love his content. You know what else too, Kelly? Um, if you think of the, th so obviously you know this, like you know this better than I do. The what? brain is part of the body, right? So think of the hormones and, you know, the catecholamines and the, you know, the, the, all the compounds that affect brain health. And how they, how muscle, body fat, and activity affect those compounds. So, t just a silly example would be um, like glucose metabolism, right? So, you know that dementia and Alzheimer's, there seems to be somewhat of a correlation between those, and almost like like a glucose uh, intolerance or issues, uh, you know, metabolizing glucose. Some people call it type three diabetes. Like the jury's still out on that, but. We know that muscle greatly increases or improves insulin sensitivity. So, for example, knowing that, I would start there. So, what you know about the brain and what makes it healthy and youthful, then go and find studies on exercise and muscle and body fat and how those things affect those particular compounds and chemicals. And then from there, I think you'll open up some, some uh, rabbit holes to where you'll be able to go down and say, oh, okay, so BDNF, great for the brain. Wow, I just read that BDNF also has effects in muscle. It looks like when you build muscle, you in increase BDNF in muscle tissue. Does that then increase BDNF in the brain? And you can kind of it'll take you down some 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 really cool rabbit Which holes. Which I literally think that that's like Andrew Huberman's podcast. Yeah. So if you haven't what his podcast, is it called Andrew Huberman? Is that what it is? Uh, what is it? I believe so. Or Huberman Lab. Yeah. That's it. Okay. Yeah. You'll 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 geek out on his content yeah. for sure if that's what you're yeah, interested Hubes in. Hubes puts great stuff out there. Yep. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thanks for calling in. Thank you so much for answering my questions. I appreciate it. You got Have it. Great day. Right. Thank you. Bye. She's a uh, she's kicking ass, dude. Russian. Holy crap, she's kicking ass, bro. I Sometimes mean, you just don't uh, see it for yourself. Right? I mean, you I, again, you know what this highlights is what we always talk about mm -hmm. is how much of this game is psychological. Oh, how how much of 99. this? Ninety nine point nine. Yeah, 99. I mean, she yeah. said her clothes are feeling tighter. I bet you. 
I mean, how many times do you get female it's clients? muscle. It's the butt. Like, oh, my legs and my pants around here. And Dude, for, for what she's talking about in terms of like her strength gains with her legs alone, yeah. I guarantee a lot of it's there. Oh, Absolutely. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And the amount of the weight that she has seen come on with the uh, increase of six, 700 calories. That's a 50% more increase in calories. Yeah, no, that's, she's, a, that's phenomenal. Had she done that without what she's doing now, you know, in her old way with all the cardio and ever, that would have been like a 15 pound body fat gain. Yeah. Not, and no muscle gain. You know, obviously, I think she was searching just for us to to I think reconfirm what she was wanting. Yeah, so, of which is good. If that was a client and I was really having a hard time, you would just shake the shit out of her. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> After I would that, love to see that. If, <laughs> <laughs> After okay, I, okay. if I shook you and you still weren't getting it through, I I might run a a, a one week cut actually to literally just lower the calories, lower the water, and let them see like. You're actually way better yeah. than you think you are. That we just pulled some water out, and now you don't think you've put on body fat, yep. and then that would also kick the appetite back up, and then we're back to the course, yeah. right? Yep. So I might do that if I felt like they were. Really but you'd struggling. have to be there monitoring. Yeah, my yeah. worry about that. That's why I told her not to weigh herself. Is that she would do that and expect to see all this fat no, loss? No, no, it, like, it was oh great. God. It was great advice. You're yeah. right. I mean, obviously, it's different when we when we can be talking to them every day versus not. But totally. she's she's kicking ass. Totally. Look, if you love Mind Pump, head over to mindpumpfree.com. Check out all the free stuff. That will give you. We're such giving people. You can also find all of us on social media. Justin is on Instagram at Mind Pump Justin. Adam is on Instagram at Mind Pump Adam. And I'm only on Twitter at Mind Pump Sal. Today, we're going to teach you everything you need to know to build a strong, well-developed chest. When I think of you know, weak points and, and areas that I struggled with developing for a, a really long time, chest was up there with the- Yeah, it was for me. It was for me for sure. I got more caught up in the weight I could lift versus how I was developing my body. I think it's one of the most challenging muscles to develop for most people because the form and technique. 